Well, good evening. It's good to see everybody this afternoon. Amen. It's good to be in God's house. I'm just looking forward to what the Lord's going to do tonight. Just continuing from our services yesterday we had, which was great and amazing. I just thank the Lord for that. And, and there again, if you visit us tonight, I just appreciate y'all coming tonight and invite somebody that we have more here tomorrow night. And I'm thankful for the ones that are here because we're going to have a great time in the Lord. And I just thank the Lord for that. With that said, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do thank you once again for just another day. Lord, you've allowed us, Father, to be back in your house tonight, Father. And Lord, I want once again just thank you so much for providing a place that we can come and worship you, Father, without persecution where so many are persecuted around this world, Father. And now, Lord, I'm just asking tonight, Father, that you would just be with the whole service, Lord, that you get glory and honor for everything that's sung, everything that's said, Father. And Lord, we're just going to give you praise and glory even now, Father God. Lord, we're living in a day and time when your people, Father, we've got to be those good soldiers of Jesus Christ, Father, to spread that good news, Father, the good word, Father, outside of these walls, Lord, because, Father, we know the work of the church is not inside these walls. It's outside, Father, in a lost and dying world. Now, Lord, I just pray once again, Lord, you just bless us tonight, Father. We're going to give you praise and glory for it all. We just ask it all in Christ's name. And all of God's children said, amen. All right, if you got your hymn books, let's all stand and turn to page 380. How's everybody doing tonight? Good to see you. Good to be here. Always good to be with you all. I'm thankful my cousin thought enough of me to ask me to come, so I will be, I will be getting her a Christmas present. I'm thankful for the Lord tonight, and I'm thankful that uh, I'm going to do an old gospel song, old Happy Goodman song. Uh, it says, meet me over on the other side, and uh, he's met me on the other side through a lot of storms and trials in my life, and uh, I'm thankful for that. Meet me over. 
point that's my child in the midst of the tide be not afraid of the tossing billows meet me over on the other side god still speaking to his children meet me over on the other side though the storms of life are many when we reach our goal but he is watching for the storm clouds he will be our savior and guide can't you hear him gently beckon meet me over on the other side do not fear the raging waters trust in me and face the storm i will calm the winds around you in my hand you're safe from harm away seas rolling and the winds stop blowing that's my child of the tide be not afraid of the tossing billows meet me over on the other side do not fear the raging waters trust in me and face the storm i will calm the winds around you in my hand you're safe from harm lazy rolling and the winds stop blowing that's my child in the midst of the tide be not afraid of the tossing billows meet me over on the other be not afraid of the tossing billows. Meet me over on the other side. <clears throat> well, that's true. That's an old fun song, but it's a true message. I love singing that song. I got another one more tried on you tonight i hadn't uh, it's an old, older song but i hadn't sung it much at all see if i can do it on good days we can stand in the presence of the lord on bad days we can still stand in the presence of the lord it's nothing like going down the road driving or you just sort of fellowshipping with the lord and you just feel his presence so strong and then those times that we're going through troubles and trials and you know we feel his presence there and i wouldn't trade it for anything that's the most valuable thing i think i have on earth is just knowing the lord and his presence
I'll do one more real quick for you tonight. And I love that song. I love standing face to face with the Lord. And um, let me do this old song here. on Lord but we're just giving it all to you now Father God that you just be with her now Father just strengthen her Lord and ask you just touch her body Father and we're just giving you all the praise and glory for it now Lord for what you're going to do Lord just be with her this time Father Lord just lift her up Lord and Father we just thank you so much for your marvelous grace and mercy Lord and Father once again just give that peace Lord it passes all understanding Father and Lord we're going to thank you even now Lord and just ask all this in Christ's name amen and amen all right, at this time, Brother Greg, we're going to have you to come on up here and bring the word. Brother, I appreciate you. I love you. Amen. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, sir. Amen. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to the book of Daniel tonight. Daniel chapter 1 tonight. So good to be uh, back with you here at Emmanuel Baptist Church. And appreciate each and every one of you. What a good looking Monday night crowd. Go and give yourself a hand tonight. Amen. Uh, this is a good crowd uh, uh, for Monday night. And uh, it is good to be with you tonight. Uh, Daniel chapter 1. We're not going to read all these verses. Probably going to look at all uh, 21 of these verses tonight as we go through the message. But uh, we're not going to begin by reading them tonight. We'll look at them as we uh, go through. Uh, if you're there, say amen. amen. If you're ready, say hallelujah. All right, sounded good, all right? Uh, in Daniel chapter 1, what we're going to be reading about tonight is uh, uh, that there's some uh, young men that are going to be taken away from their home, and they're not going to be at home anymore. They're going to be in a strange land. 
And I just want to share with you tonight, as the church tonight, as believers in Jesus Christ, in, a, in our America that we live in today, we are no longer the home team anymore. Uh, we're on the visiting side right now, and I just want you to get this image in your mind tonight that uh, I don't know how many of you enjoy college football, but I, uh, one of my favorite things to watch is college football on uh, Saturday afternoons. And if you ever watch college football, you know that uh, when the teams start coming out of the tunnel or wherever uh, they're coming out from there, that when the home team comes out, uh, man, the band's playing and the cheerleaders are cheering and everyone's standing and they're shouting and they're hollering and they may not have won a game all year. Everybody's talking about we're number one uh, right now. Now they're waving, they're celebrating. Uh, the home team has showed up. Uh, we, we, we are uh, celebrating right now. But you know when the visitors come out, when the visitors come out, they uh, start making their way to the field, and, and people begin to boo them and, and jeer at them and, and, and all kind of things they, they say to them and maybe even about them there. And can I just let you know tonight, as the church, there was a time that we were the home team in America. That there was a time that you, if you were a believer in Jesus Christ and, and followed the Lord and served him, uh, that you were supported in our nation. There was a time where you were supported at the schoolhouse. You, you were supported at the workplace. You were supported among your family and your friends. But that's no longer the case anymore. If you don't believe me tonight, you go down to a street corner somewhere and you start preaching and you start telling people about Jesus. Ain't no telling what you may have said about you. Ain't no telling what they may try to do to you. But what's sad in America today is people can go out and protest the most ungodly things in the world you can imagine and people are clapping and applauding and cheering them all and talking about how brave they are. And today unfortunately in America the Judeo-Christian values that we hold on to today and that our nation was founded on, there's not that many that are still holding on to them right now. Not that many that are still believing that way right now. You see the way we believe tonight about life and about decency and about morals and values. Uh, there ain't many in our land that is believing the same way that they should be believing tonight. And unfortunately because of that, there's many within the church. I would say that are Christian, but I wonder sometimes there are many that are within the church right now that they've decided to become traitors right now. And they decided to commit the act of treason right now. Uh, they would rather be applauded and affirmed and accepted and embraced by the world and to follow the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. And they'd rather to give in and just go the way everybody else is going tonight, even at the expense of the commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ, their commitment to God's house, to his church, to the commitment to the word of God tonight. And there's many that have kind of thrown in the tent, raised the white flag, and said we give up tonight folks i want you to know something as a preacher tonight i ain't ready to give up right now i don't care if they're cheering if they're applauding if they're celebrating or they booing or jeering tonight i'm gonna stand for jesus amen but we need to make a determination like paul did in romans chapter one in verse 16 where Paul says I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ it is the power of God and the salvation and Paul said I'm not ashamed you know what is sad tonight it don't seem like nobody's ashamed of anything right now They'll come out doing anything and everything that you could ever imagine and some things you couldn't even imagine that they're doing right now. It don't seem like nobody's ashamed anymore. Well, if they're not ashamed, we don't need to be ashamed of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We need to stand up and serve him in a way that we never have before. And tonight, unfortunately, uh, we're basically the visiting team tonight, but that don't mean that we're the losing team. Amen. In fact, I've already read the end of the story. I've heard the end of the book. I know we're on the winning side tonight. So let's go ahead and serve Jesus right now. Let's go ahead and live for the Lord. And in Daniel chapter 1 that we're looking at here tonight, uh, we might wonder and ask the question tonight, well, how in the world can we survive? How can we thrive? How can we live in a declining and decaying culture like we have today? How can we keep going? How 
Can we make it? Daniel chapter 1's got some truths for us here tonight that's going to show us and teach us how we can keep going on, how we can keep living for our Lord. And you got to remember as we read Daniel chapter one that Daniel right now is a teenage boy right now he's just a young man right now and here's what begins to happen as we read Daniel chapter 1 and verse 1 the Bible says it's in the third year of King Jehoiakim the king of Judah and in that third year came Nebuchadnezzar the king of the Babylonians and I, I want you to notice what Nebuchadnezzar did when he came the Bible says he besieged the city of Jerusalem that means he laid attack to the city of Jerusalem church I don't know if you've identified I don't know if you woke up yet uh, to this fact or not but we are under an attack today the enemy's attacking and throwing everything he can doing everything he can right now and Nebuchadnezzar came and besieged the city of Jerusalem there in verse 2 the Bible says as he came and, and besieged the city of Jerusalem that uh, he began to take some things out of the city of Jerusalem he went down to the house of God and began to take some of the vessels out of the house of God some of the silver and the gold and maybe some of the plates and the cups and, and all the things they had in the house of God and he carried it back to the land of Shinar carried it back to the house of his gods put it up there in the treasury that he had he took it out of the house of God and the enemy came and began to take out of the house of God do you realize what the enemy's trying to do today he's trying to take a lot out of the house of God right now the devil says if I can get them to stop preaching the word of God if I can get them to stop believing the word of God if I can get them to stop standing upon the word of God if I can get them to stop singing the great songs of God there if I can get them to stop praising God well I got them there I want you to know tonight we don't need to stop right now we need to keep on going the enemy came into the house of God begin to take some things begin to take some of the vessels that they had some of the items that was around the house of God now what would you imagine if we came for revival tonight and walked through the doors and seen that somebody's come in here and they've stolen the pulpit they've taken the piano the keyboards the microphone the sound systems and, and they just kind of took a little bit of everything out of here we'd say how tragic how awful how bad that would be man that, that is terrible uh, of what they've done to the house of God man that is awful there and that's what Nebuchadnezzar did but he didn't stop there you see, here's what we got tonight. Some say, well, if that's all the devil does, it ain't that bad. Can I tell you something tonight? The devil ain't going to stop right there. He ain't going to be satisfied with just taking a little bit. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy everything that he possibly can. And could you imagine coming in tonight and seeing things taken out of the house of God? That would be bad and that would be awful. But could you imagine coming in all of a sudden? It ain't just things that are taken out right now because verse 3 says here, Here's what he did. He told Ashpenaz, uh, one of the master of his eunuchs down there, I want you to go get the children right now, and I want you to get the children out of Jerusalem, and I want you to bring them back to Babylon. It would be awful and terrible for stuff in the house of God to be gone. That's to lose a keyboard or a microphone. But when the devil comes to get our children, how many would agree with me? That's a step above anything else we could imagine tonight. But you know that's what the enemy is doing right now? He's coming to get every child, every young person he could possibly get. And look at what Nebuchadnezzar in verse 4, look at what his plan was. Look at who he wanted there. The, the Bible says he sent down to get the children and not just any of the kids there. He wanted to come and get those that didn't have a blemish, those that was well favored there. He wanted to get the good-looking kids, the well-built kids, the athletic kids, the big, strong kids. Not only that, those that were skillful in wisdom, understanding science. He wanted to get the smart kids down there. Let's just say this, I would have been safe and sound in Jerusalem. Amen. Didn't fit any of those categories there, okay? Nebuchadnezzar said, let's get the cream of the crop, get the best of the best right now, get the best looking kids they got, get the most talented kids they got, the smartest kids they got. But can I be honest with you tonight? It don't matter how the rest of the world may look at your child. It may not matter how the rest of the world, what they may call your grandchild, what they may say about your family, what they may say about your children there in the eyes of a mama and a daddy, in the eyes of a grandma and a grandpa. There ain't nothing like our youngins. Amen. Uh, 
They're the most beautiful thing in the world. I don't care if they're as ugly as I don't know what. In your eyes, they are absolutely gorgeous and beautiful there. It don't matter how scrawny they may look to everybody else. They are some kind of a specimen to you and I. Uh, there as we look at our children and our grandchildren. And tonight, what we need to realize and what we need to understand, there is an enemy that is coming trying to take that that is so precious to you, that, that is so beautiful to you, that that you love and adore and so uh, so valuable to you tonight. There's an enemy trying to come and to steal, kill, and destroy them tonight. And he went down there and he got the kids and started carrying them back. Now, I want you to think about something as we begin to read these verses. The first thing Nebuchadnezzar had in mind, there's the king of Babylon. I want to isolate these kids right now. I want to get them away from everything that they're comfortable with right now. I want to take them away from everything they've been taught, everything they have learned. I want to get them over here so that we can uh, begin to pour into them all of our ways and thinkings. And, and if you ever read the history of Babylon, uh, it's probably the most wicked nation that has ever been. In fact, Revelation 18, God said this about Babylon, that their sins are bound so high that they went all the way up to heaven there. It's like they just piled one sin on top of another sin. They did this bad today. Well, if they were that bad today, they were even worse tomorrow. And next week, they were doing something even worse. And what they did last week, sound like America. Amen. Uh, just as soon as we begin to think it can't get any worse than this, they did what? That they, They're doing what? They, I can't. They, no. There's no way in the world they did that. I can't believe that right now. And it seemed like it's getting worse by the hour right now. Babylon, the sins was piled up to heaven there. They were in a land right now that they were separated. They didn't sing the songs of Zion in and, and Babylon down there. They didn't have the hymns and the good old songs that, that we have to sing tonight. Uh, they didn't have the temple to run to there. They, uh, they, they couldn't call Nana and Papa on the phone and ask for help. They couldn't run down to the preacher there. And they've been isolated. They, they've been taken away from everything that they were familiar with. And, 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 and Nebuchadnezzar brings them out of their homeland into a strange land into a land that is different and unusual to them in a land they don't recognize right now into a land that nothing seems right right now into a land that is totally different than what they grew up in how many would agree with me that's almost America today too we begin to look around and this don't look like anything that I remember growing up in this don't appear to be the way America is supposed to be right now and he's isolated these young people there but not only did he isolate them, and I want you to grab hold of this, he began to indoctrinate them. Look at the last part of verse 4, what they did when they brought them there into the land of Babylon. They began to teach them the learning and the tongue or the language of the Babylonians, the Chaldeans. You know what they want to do right now? They want to make them Babylonians right now. And they begin to indoctrinate them. Verse 5, it goes on to say, for three years, they're going to teach them and train them. Almost if you could get in your mind tonight, uh, that they're going to send them off to college right now. Lord, have mercy on our young people when they leave home and go off to college this day and time. What they may be learning, what they may be experiencing, what they may be uh, thro have thrown at them today uh, is it, it, sad almost of what's being taught in some of our higher education today. And they began to indoctrinate them. And there's another word you can use for that word, indoctrinate. And they literally began to brainwash them. You know what they began to want to do with these young people that they got away from mom and daddy right now? They got away from Nana and Papa. Uh, they're not with the temple anymore. They don't have the priest or the preachers running around anymore. We got them away. Let's make them. Let's get them to where they look like Babylonians, where they talk like Babylonians, where they act like Babylonians, where they eat like Babylonians. Let's get them to where uh, they have forgot everything that they had ever learned. And even if they do remember it, they'll think it don't matter. It's not really that important anymore. And they'll put all that behind them there let's make them babylonians right now let's de-israelize them and let's make them babylon and they begin to indoctrinate or to brainwash them you realize in america that we're living in today the same thing is happening right now 
to our young people, to our children, to our young adults, to all those that are growing up right now. That's what our world, our nation, our America wants to do right now is to indoctrinate our kids that the things your mom and dad stood for, the stuff your grandparents believed in, it ain't good enough for you. Can I tell you something right now? My Lord ain't changed today. His word hadn't changed. It's the same today as it was yesterday and will be the same forevermore. If it was good enough for grandma and grandpa back yonder, it's good enough for you and I even right now today. And almost every institution we got today is anti-God right now. You look at our media today, at things that are being put out right now, from music to movies to TV shows to news channels right now. It is anti-God. I know there are some exceptions. They're few and far between probably, uh, but everything's anti-God right now. I, I mean, you look at stuff today and, and things on the TV that used to offend us 20 years ago. We just shrug our shoulders. Okay, well, every show's got that now. Every, everybody's doing that now. I mean, it's got to the point I can't even watch commercials anymore so bad and you know what they're doing in commercials with all these commercials of, of showing this lifestyle and that lifestyle and, and they're trying to brainwash us and indoctrinate us into accepting it and, and thinking everybody's doing that everybody's living that way well that's a lie straight out of hell because everybody ain't doing that there's somebody still standing for God amen and we got a media right now that's trying to indoctrinate our kids, our young people, our families, our homes today to brainwash them and to believe in that everything is all right. Just go ahead and do what you want to. It's not just the media today either. I'm going to go ahead, since I've already ruffled some feathers, and go ahead and jump in deep right now. It's not just the media right now. It's the social media today also. There's a whole lot of junk and garbage, and I know y'all have heard it enough. If we get our faces out of Facebook and get it back into the real book, to the Word of God, I think we would see a difference in our marriages, in our homes, in our families, and guess what? Even in our churches, amen? There are people who show up to church on Sunday morning can tell you about what everybody in Moore County and probably the state of North Carolina has done, where they went, who they were with, what they ate, what they saw, and everything else, and can't tell you one word that they got from the Word of God. What a tragedy that is of how much time we spend on all of that and how little time we spend with Almighty God. And, and let me just share something with you tonight. There's some stuff going around, tic-tac, not tic-tac, what is it called, the videos, uh, tic-tac, whatever that is there. Uh, they, they got all kind of challenges right now. I'm still old school. Y'all got to work with me. I, I, all kinds of challenges right now did you realize that they've got challenges each month for our children to go to school and the month of september it was tears up and up at school and that some of our young people that uh from middle schools to our high schools right here in our county uh, went into bathrooms began to destroy bathrooms tear things up uh this month of october is slap a teacher or beat a teacher month you say ah that will never happen well did you read the news down in Louisiana, where there was a 64-year-old teacher that a 16-year-old high school student beat her so bad she was hospitalized because she wanted to fulfill the TikTok challenge. Let me share something with you tonight, mamas and daddies, grandmas and grandpas. Whatever there's on that cell phone, you better be finding out what they're looking at, who they're talking to, and who they're hanging out with. Well, I can't get, I, I had a parent the other day tell me, well, you know, Junior's 12 years old. I, I just can't get into his privacy and I can't look at his phone. Are you kidding? Who's paying the phone bill? Is Junior paying it or are you paying it tonight? Uh, you better decide. Am I going to let the devil just come in and destroy and to steal and to kill my family, my children, my home and everything else? Or am I going to take a stand for Almighty God and it's time for somebody, mom and daddy, grandma, grandpa, to stand up for God and say, it ain't going to happen in our house, devil. It's not going to happen. Everything seems to be anti-God today. Our, our education today is uh, anti-God. and uh, You better be careful what your youngins and what your young people are reading, what they're learning, what gain, they're gaining in school. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar said, if I can teach them the learning and the tongue, the language of uh, the Babylonians, I got them right now. I got them there. If I can just pour all that into them there, be careful of what your children are learning today. He began to indoctrinate them. He began to isolate them. But you know what he also wanted to do? He wanted to attack their identification. 
who they are. You know how you identify tonight by your name, who you are. You see, you walk around Moore County and you mention the name Greg Newton to some folks. All kind of thoughts probably come to people's mind, yeah. That good looking fella. I thought that'd be amen, not laughter there. That's come on. What's wrong with y'all? Great big old tall guy. Yeah, that, that's a well cultured guy there. All kind of things begin to come to your mind when people hear your name. Your name is mentioned. There's all kind of things because that's how people identify you. That's how they know you. That's how they know who you are. Well, look at verse 6 of Daniel chapter 1 and what it tells us there, that among some of those children there, and, and there's been different estimates that some said there might have been hundreds of kids that Nebuchadnezzar brought out of Jerusalem at this time to Babylon. The others say there might have been thousands that, that he brought out there. That We really don't know how many that he brought out, but among all of these kids, there was four that stood out. And these four, their names were Daniel and Hananiah, and Mishael, and Azariah. Now, I want you to look at those names very carefully there. Because those names are good, godly names that their parents had given to them. The name Daniel, if you look at the end of his name there, it's got the two letters E-L there at the end of it. When you read E-L in the Old Testament, that is the word for God there. The name Daniel literally means God is my judge. I can imagine his mom and daddy looking at that little baby when he was born and saying, we don't want our son to ever get away from God. Whenever he hears his name called out, he's got to think of God. He's going to be reminded of God. I want God to be all over his life. I want God to be all in his life. And they named him Daniel. God is my judge. God's the one that will stand for me. God's the one that will stand with me there. And they named their child Daniel. Here's another one of the Mishael. And there's the letters E-L again Michelle it literally means who is God or who is like God who can stand against God there and there's a mom and daddy apparently that named their child we want him to know that no matter what he faces no matter what he goes through that God will be with him he can stand no matter where he's at and you know what we better pour into our children tonight that God is with you you can stand when everybody else is bowing down to the world and then there's other two there Hananiah and Azariah. And if you look at their names, the last three letters of their names, I-A-H, they come from the Hebrew word or name of Jehovah there, the Lord there. And their names means, Hananiah means the Lord is gracious. You can say amen to that. Thank God for his grace. Azariah, his name literally means the Lord is my helper. Who can say amen to that if it hadn't been for the Lord on my side? Where in the world would I be at right now? The Lord is my helper. And all four of these boys, apparently even in Judah, as messed up as it was at that time, as bad as it was, as, as many people that had turned their back on God, and, and because of that, God's judgment came down upon them there. Even in the midst of all of that, apparently there were some families and some mamas and daddies that said, we're not going to give up. We're not going to give up on our family, on our home. It don't matter how the neighbors down the road live it. It don't matter how the people across town are doing. It don't matter what everybody else is at delight. We're going to serve God. As for me and my house, anybody else ready tonight to say, it don't matter which way America goes. No matter what they may believe, how they may act, what they may get into. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord and their son that began to name their children there gave them good godly names in verse 6 but here's what Nebuchadnezzar does as he's bringing them from Jerusalem into Babylon in verse 7 it says that they look down at these four boys and decided let's rename them let's change their identity there and they began to hear about their names God is my judge and who is like God, and the Lord is gracious, and the Lord's my helper. We, we don't need all that. We, we can't brainwash them and indoctrinate them if, if that's what they're hanging on to there. we got to change this right now. And so they begin to change the names of these four boys. The name of Daniel, they decided to call him Belshazzar. The name of Hananiah, they called him Shadrach. Name of Mishael, they called him Meshach. And the name of Azariah, they called him Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that we read about them in chapter 3. 
They renamed these boys. And if you look at those names of those that they gave to them at this time, won't take time to look at all those names there, but they all came from Babylonian gods. And they named after their God of Israel there. Let's rename them. Let's give them a name that when they hear that, they'll think of our Babylonian gods. It'll, it'll change their identity. It'll change their outlook. And you know what is sad today is in the midst of the indoctrination and the brainwashing that's going on with our children and our young people today, we got a lot of people wanting to, uh, to tell them uh, that God messed up when he made you. We got some folks in the church now, I want you to follow with me, that's got some misplaced sympathy right now. Because we got some folks in the church that if your child or your grandchild and little Johnny comes up to you and little Johnny says, I don't want to be Johnny anymore, I want to be Judy. That's who I want to be. I'm a girl. I'm not a boy. I want to be a girl. And we got some folks, unfortunately, today that were saying, I said, oh, he's so brave. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that's so wonderful. Can I tell you something tonight? Little Johnny's Johnny. He's not Judy, friends. It ain't brave. It ain't wonderful. It's perverted and straight out of hell today at what people are trying to tell kids today. Hey, God messed up. You shouldn't be a boy. You should be a girl. I got over 50 different genders today. I don't have any idea who they are today. Can I tell you something tonight? Young people, teenagers, mamas, and daddies, you are created and made in the image of Almighty God. And God ain't made no junk tonight. And they got all these genders today. God settled it way back in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27 when the Bible says that God made you and I in his image and he made them male and female. That's it, folks. There ain't no 50-some genders. There ain't no fluid gender right now. I'm a boy today, a girl today. Tomorrow, don't know what it might be next week. No, God has made you the way you need to be, and God didn't make a mistake tonight. And unfortunately, in our world today, we got young people growing up. We don't really know who we're supposed to be. We don't know who we are. Don't know how we're supposed to die. Don't know if I'm a boy or a girl. Don't know what I am. Uh, you surrender your heart and life to Almighty God, and God will begin to reveal to you who you are tonight. Here's what Nebuchadnezzar began to do. He began to isolate all these young people. He began to indoctrinate them, to brainwash them. He wanted to work on their identity. Let, let's see if I can get them to change there. Let's see if I can get them to doing something different. But in the midst of all this, Nebuchadnezzar kept offering them stuff. Look, look back at verse 5, at the last part of verse 5. You know what Nebuchadnezzar did? He offered them a government job. Hmm. Look at the last part of verse 5. It says, at the end, therefore, they might stand before the king. You know what? That's saying he's going to give them a job to stand in the presence of the king. I'm going to give you an education. I'm going to give you food. I'm going to give you all of this right now. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you. But the whole time I'm giving to you, I'm going to be changing you to what I want you to be. Woo! You better wake up. You know where we at in America today? We got a gimme, gimme, gimme society right now. Just keep on giving me, giving to me, give me, give me, give me, uh, give me. Uh, you, you can keep on milking the golden goose, but it's going to run out after a while. Amen. Give me, give me, give me, give me. And the whole time we got people promising, uh, yeah, I'll give this to you. I'll, I'll be free. You can have this. But you know what they're doing? They're trying to get you to be what they want you to be instead of what God has created you to be. And we better be careful how we're giving, 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 and receiving, receiving today. Because here's what Nebuchadnezzar did. I'm going to give you guys a free education. And at the end of that free education, I'm going to give you a job. I'm going to give you a big salary. I'm going to, get, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to give you. And, and what Nebuchadnezzar weren't telling them, that the whole time I'm giving you, I'm taking from you everything that you've had. And that's what's happening in our world today. we got a government right now that's talking about what we're going to give, what we're going to give, and they're taking, 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 and taking more and more all the time. Nebuchadnezzar said, we're going to give you a job. We're going to give you an education. We're going to give you food. We, uh, we're going to give you a place. We're going to give you. But we're going to take care of you. Y'all going to be all right right now. But in Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8, one of my favorite verses in all the Bible, here's what Daniel decides. Here's what Daniel does. They, they talk about all we're going to give you, all we're going to give you. We're going to give you this. We're going to give you that. But the Bible says in Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8, and I love those first three letters, that first word that begins, but. 
And Nebuchadnezzar talking about what he's going to give, what he's going to do, how he's going to change, how, how we're going to make you into what we want you to be. And the Bible says in verse 8, but. And you know what we need tonight? The world and America and everybody else is trying to tell you and I, we're going to change you. We're going to make you this. We're going to make you that. You're going to be different. You're not going to be what God created you to be. We need to look back at them and say, hey, you may give this. You may give that. You may decide this. You may decide that. But there's something in my life that ain't going to change. Because here's what Daniel said in Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's meat or that portion that the king was going to give him. Now, some of you sitting here thinking right now, wait a second. Daniel went to their school for three years. Are we going to read about it at the end of chapter 1? Yes, he did. Daniel eventually took a job with Nebuchadnezzar there. Yes, he did. Daniel got paid. Yes, he did. You realize tonight, we may have to go to the public schools tonight. We may have to work in the public sector tonight. We may have to live in a neighborhood where everybody around us seems to be ungodly tonight. We may live in a neighborhood where we get up on Sunday morning to come to church and they out mowing the grass with no thought of on God or anything else. We're on Saturday night down, two houses down, they're throwing a party and down there doing all kind of ungodly. We may have to live there. We may have to work there. We may have to go to school there, but we don't have to be like them. Amen. And here's what Daniel said. Daniel purposed in his heart right now. I'm not going to defile myself. You might say, but wait a second. He went to the school. Yes, he did. He took the job. Yes, he did. He got paid. Yes, he did. But Daniel drew a line, and you might be surprised, and as bad this is, might hurt when I say this, where Daniel drew the line was where, what he was going to eat. Because here's what Daniel said. You, you, you're going to give me some food, but you just went out and offered to your idols, and you sacrificed that, and, and you said the blessing over your idol and over your gods over there. Well, well, well now let me say, I grew up in Emmanuel Baptist Church. They taught me some of the Word of God, Amen. And mamas and daddies, we better be pouring in the Word of God in our children and our young people. Emmanuel Baptists should do everything they can for your children and your young people. They'll teach you and set up classes and do all they can. But they can never, ever, the church will never, ever take the place and the role of mama and daddy. The Bible says for you as mama and daddy to raise your children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Nobody, nothing else will ever take the place of a mom and daddy. Daniel was sitting there and he said, I learned some things about, about the Word of God. Here's what I learned. I learned in Leviticus chapter 7, God told us there are some things we're to eat and some things we ain't going to eat. Y'all bringing out all that bacon and them pork chops and that ham and that stuff. I kept eating that because God told me not to. I read in Exodus chapter 34 and verse 14 and 15 where God has told us that any food that's been offered to an idol or to a sacrifice to another God, you shall not eat that food. And you're offering all that meat when you sacrifice that, that animal to be cooked there. You offered it to your gods. And, and I can't go against what my God has already said in his word. And you know where Daniel, where, where, where he drew the line at? Where Daniel purposed in his heart was when they came to a point that, okay, we're going to give you a job, we're going to pay you, but now we want you to break the Word of God. Now we want you to go against what God has said. Now we want you to be disobedient to God. And Daniel probably looked at him and said, you must be out of your mind if you're asking me to be disobedient to my God. If you're asking me to break my God's what law and go against my God's Word. It no way in the world. And Daniel purposed in his heart, I'm not going to defy myself with that. And you know what Daniel did? He drew a line in the sand and said, I can't go no further right now. This is it right now. You know what we need to do in our life today? Because there's a lot of things and a lot of stuff and a lot of people. And our world today is trying to get you to go against what Almighty God's already said. And you know what we got to do today is draw a line in the sand and say, yeah, I may go to the work site where everybody around me is talking ungodly and acting ungodly, but this is where God has placed me at and where God's put me. I may live in a neighborhood where everybody seems to be getting further and further away from God. May have to go to a school where men up and down the halls is mighty ungodly right now, but I'm drawing the line in the sand. Don't ask me to do what you're doing right now. Don't ask me to join in with you. And here's the problem tonight, church. We've drawn a line in the sand, and 
We stood there pretty good, but you know what the church has done? All of a sudden, we backed up and said, well, maybe we just need to give in a little bit, and we'll draw the line in right here. Maybe we were just too strong on that right there. Maybe we were just too narrow-minded. And unfortunately, after we back up a little bit, we back up a little bit more, and we draw the line in the sand. Well, maybe, you know, we shouldn't have come down so hard on that issue. Maybe we, we need to just rethink that a little bit. And then we back up a little bit more. And you know what's happening, church? Every time we're back it up every time we give it in to something else every time we are accepting something else that's ungodly and evil into our life into our homes into our neighborhood into our church you know what's happening is the devil's taking more and more and more and more the night is not time to back up it's time to stand up and say no we're drawing a line right here we're not going any further back it's time to take a stand for Almighty God tonight in a way like we never have before because the devil is taking too many, too many tonight, too many overdosing tonight on drugs, too many get hooked up on pills and every kind of drug you can imagine today. Too many of our young people today are so messed up by the time they get out of high school. They have already just messed up their life. It seems like, where in the world am I going to go right now? And we're backing up, backing up. It ain't no time to back up right now. It's time to stand up right now. You want to know what the devil's after more than anything else tonight? If the devil is down in hell tonight. He's plotting and planning. I want you to listen right now how he can destroy your home and your family right now. Because he knows if he can destroy the home and the family, the church will just fall apart. The devil's trying to destroy every home and every family he can. I've heard men, and I had them come and look and say, I just ain't happy right now. I want to look back and say, well, I ain't happy all the time either. Just go on and get back into it and love your life a little bit more, and she'll come around to you. Amen. Women say, well, I don't know. I can't live with that man. I don't know what's wrong. Just fry him some chicken. He'll be all right. Amen. We got folks that they ready to throw in the towel, ready to give up right now, ready to quit right now. And you know what all the hell does when another family ends in divorce, when another family splits up, when another young person is falling off into drugs and into all kind of mess? You know what hell does that? They begin to cheer and applaud. We destroyed another family. We messed up another home. We took care of another marriage right now. Tonight, church, it's no time to back up right now. We better draw the line in the sand and say here's where we're standing at right now don't ask me to compromise on my church attendance don't ask me to compromise on my praise to the Lord don't ask me to compromise on my prayer life and my Bible study time don't ask me to begin to give up all of that we're not going to do that here's where we're standing at and mama and daddy make sure your children and your grandchildren grandparents know where you're standing at tonight you drew a line in the sand and said, I'm not backing up anymore. But Daniel did something interesting here. Down in verse 21, he did something unusual that many Baptists don't ever get around to doing. You look down at the end of the chapter, Daniel chapter 1 and verse 21. It says something interesting about Daniel. It says, and Daniel did what, church? And Daniel did what? Continue. Y'all not, you're not really agreeing to that. And Daniel did what, church? He what? Let's see if we can kind of, kind of convince ourselves right now. And Daniel did what? He continued. And it's interesting that he continued even to the first year of King Cyrus. You know what? That, that's 70 years that he continued. You know what Daniel did? And here's, grab hold of this. It's one thing, you know, the purpose in your heart. I'm not going to defile myself with that meat. Could you imagine going to breakfast every day? And they bringing out bacon and grits and eggs. And how many of you just know the smell of bacon? Oh, man, it just does something inside of you. And they setting that bacon around. And apparently these four are the only ones not enjoying it right now. Apparently everybody else already joined on into it. And they're eating bacon away. And man, they, don't you want some of this? Man, you don't know what you're missing out on right now. Man, this is good stuff right now and, and could you imagine come back for supper and they sit down a plate of barbecue with some big old pork chops they got fried up down there and they all eating that and, and, and Daniel's purpose in his heart I'm not going to defile myself with this I'm not going to defile myself how do you realize tonight it would be re real easy for Daniel to say well I'm not going to eat all that pork chop just give me a taste of it just let me see you say, let, give me a bite of it there and he begins to say mm, wow that's pretty good 
And when everybody's gone, he's looking around. Did anybody leave any pork chop left so I can get a little bit there? Maybe won't nobody see me right now. You know what Daniel did? He did uh, something different than most Baptists do. He continued, friends. He told God, this is where I'm going to stand at. This is where I'm drawing the line at. And he continued for 70 years doing that. You know what happens in the church today? We come to revival. We get pumped up. And, oh, God, I'm going to read your word. I'm going to stand. going to pray for my family. We're going to be all right. And come next week you done backed up on what you said this week Daniel continued he kept on going he drew a line in the sand and said I'm not backing up right now I'm going to stand for almighty God and he purposed in his heart not to defile himself but what males are the Babylonian eunuch that was supposed to be in charge and watching over Daniel got kind of concerned because Daniel said, just give us some pork to eat. Just give us some vegetables, some beans and, and stuff to eat. That, we'll, we'll be fine. And Melzar began to think, began to say, but wait a minute, boys. Uh, everybody else is eating the, king, uh, eating the meat there, uh, eating the good stuff right now. Y'all going to waste away. And Daniel came up with an idea in verse 12. He beseeched him and said, here's what I want you to do. Just for, for 10 days, just try us out. Just give us some pork to eat, some beans, give us some salad to eat. And, and 10 days later, just see, check, check us out, see what's happening. And in verse 15, sure enough, they brought Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego back out. And when they came, they were fairer and fatter than any of the rest of them were. You realize God can do in your life what nothing else could possibly do. When you take a stand for God and everybody learns you, around you says you're crazy, everybody around you says that don't make a lick of sense, everybody around you says you better, you better not do that, you, 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 you're getting kind of fanatical there, you better slow down a little bit. Right, can I be honest with you? We're so far from being fanatical tonight, we just need to wind up and turn loose and let God take hold tonight. Don't worry about what everybody else is saying, what everybody else is telling you tonight. Uh, they looked at Daniel and said, you're going to be messed up, man. You're gonna, uh, th this isn't good right now. And, and Daniel says, oh, yeah, just try us out. And sure enough, in 10 days, they were fair and fatter than anybody else. And I want you to notice something incredible tonight. In verse 8, Daniel purposed in his heart, I'm not going to defile myself against the Lord. In verse 9, I want you to grab hold of the first two words. Verse 9, the first two words are, now God. That's good words, amen. Daniel says, I'm purposing in my heart not to defy myself. I'm going to stand for the Lord. I'm going to draw a line in the sand. This is where we're standing up at. And verse 9 says, now God. Guess what God did? He brought Daniel into favor. He began to pour blessings out upon Daniel. He began to strengthen and empower Daniel in a way that Daniel probably could not imagine. You know what we want tonight? We want revival tonight. We want to live for God, but we want to do it our way. We want to give in. We want to slack up a little bit. We want to, you know, man, we don't have to get that carried away by that. And, and you know what Daniel did? Daniel purposed in his heart, this is it. Not backing up, not giving up, not moving in. This is where I'm standing. And now God brought favor, poured out blessings upon Daniel. Church, you know where we need to be at tonight? We need to be ready to take a stand for God. If you ain't got anything else to stand for, your family's worth standing for tonight because we're living in a world tonight where a world's trying to isolate your family your kids your young people your young adults trying to indoctrinate and brainwash them and trying to change their identity of who they are in church we had better stand up tonight in a way like we have never stood before and aren't you glad now god can send revival even right now now God can work a miracle even right now. Now God can touch even right now if we're willing to take a stand tonight. I want you to stand up tonight as we get ready for the invitation at this time. As you stand tonight, I want you to think about something tonight. At the end of Daniel chapter 1 and verse 20, they brought these four young men after three years of being in school. And you know what Nebuchadnezzar discovered and what he found out about them? In verse 20, he found out that they were now 10 times better than all the rest that they had there. 10 times better. In fact, in verse 20, 19, it says that when Nebuchadnezzar looked at them there, you know what he discovered? You know what he found out? That there was none like Daniel and these three friends of his. There was none like him. 
Nobody could be found that could stand. And you know how Daniel and these three young men, you know how they stood out from everybody else? Because they stood for something. Tonight, church, you know what we got to do tonight? We got to stand for something. I don't know how many of you are here tonight has got family. Anybody here tonight got some children? Just raise your hand tonight. You got children tonight all around this building. Anybody here tonight got any grandchildren tonight? Amen. Ain't nothing like them. Amen. Let me challenge you with something right now. We live in a world that would love to do nothing else than to take your children and turn them into something that God's not created them to be. And tonight, I'm going to challenge you as Pastor Mike comes, as we have this invitation. Church, won't you just come to this altar tonight? Bring your family tonight and say, I'm drawing that line in the sand. God, we're not going to break your word. We're going to live for you, God. We're going to stand for you. Even right now, I wonder if anybody would be willing to step out. Brother, go ahead and begin to play as he begins to play. Would you come tonight to pray for your family, to pray for your children? The attack's real. The enemy's real. The enemy's doing everything he can. Won't you come, even right now, to come and to take that stand? To stand for my kids, for my children tonight. Don't want to give in tonight. Don't want to give up tonight. Won't you come? Won't you come? Yes, Lord. Grandma, Grandpa, won't you come? Won't you pray for that little one? That one that God's blessed you with, Mom and Dad. Don't just sit back and say, the devil, you, ain't nothing I can do. Oh, yes, there is. Now, God, now, God, Lord, we come together tonight to pray, Lord. Pray for our families tonight, God. Lord, thank you for the family that you blessed us with, Lord. All those hands that went up a while ago, we got some children. No doubt there's some here tonight. Got some children that's young and some that's teenagers, some that's young adults, some may be fully grown tonight, but there's still babies in our eyes, Lord, and, and we're not going to give up on them tonight. We're not going to let the devil win tonight in their life. And, oh, God, I pray tonight. I pray for our families, for our home tonight, Lord, for our children tonight, God. And, Lord, I pray for us tonight as parents as grandparents tonight, even in the world that we're living in right now, the society that has turned their back on God, that I pray that we would stand tonight with those little eyes and those little ears when they see us and hear us. They'll know where we stand at. They know what we believe in. They know what we're living for tonight. God, I just pray right now, Lord. Oh, Lord, just touch us tonight in our families, in our homes tonight. God, the devil's destroyed too many tonight. God, I pray tonight, Lord. Hmm. Yes, Lord, thank you for what you're doing. That one you're delivering even right now, God, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hmm. Help us, Lord. Lord And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Greg, for that message tonight. I thank you so much for that. Thanks for Brother Bobby. Special music tonight. Everybody had a good time. Give them a hand. 
I wanted to apologize to Greg for just a minute. I was going. I was supposed to move that pulpit and put this one up here for you. Yeah, but I forgot to. <laughs> We always picking on each other because we've been together many, many years. But I tell you what, I thank the Lord for this man. They may call him little, but I tell you what, he's a big kick and a stick of dynamite, ain't he? <laughs> Amen. So I just thank the Lord for that once again. Invite someone tomorrow night. Please be back tomorrow night. There again, great number tonight, a Monday night. I appreciate each and every one of you coming here tonight. And what a great, great time in the Lord we had. Just a couple updates. They had to take Sister Diane home. Her blood pressure's up. Uh, inner ear vertigo her sugar's just a little bit up so continue to pray for her as they took her home and also lucille uh, she's not feeling too well colin so continue to pray for her and of course all those on our prayer request list i know we have many sister fran continue to pray for her but i'm so thankful today hey god's still on the throne he's still in control we're going to continue to trust in him and praise him and i just thank the lord for that anything else before we close tonight appreciate y'all being here once again same place same time tomorrow night so bring your shout, bring your glory, and we're going to give him praise for the Lord. Amen. 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 Let us close. Father, we do thank you once again for another night, for just another great message, Lord. Father, we thank you, Father, for the sweet Holy Spirit, Lord, as always, Father, just being with us, Lord, and we just felt the presence of that tonight, Lord. And, Father, just as uh, Brother Greg preached, Father, we got to draw that line, Lord. we got to stand our ground, Father, and, Lord, just pre uh, uh, preach you in season and out of season, Lord, Father, knowing in a day, Father, and and the things that we see going on in this country, Father, we're not going to be liked. We're going to be hated. But, Father, why should we think any different, Lord? Because they hated my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord. Father, we're going to continue to love you, Father. Press on, Lord. And, Father, tonight as we leave here, Lord, I just once again want to pray for those on our prayer request list, Father. Lord, the ones we just mentioned, Sister Diane, Lucy, and so many others, Lord. And, Father, just be with them once again. As we leave here tonight, Father, be with our families. Lord, lead, guide, and protect. Put a hedge of protection around them, Father, until our next appointed time, Father. Let us continue to glorify you, Lord. And, Father, we're still looking, Father. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the King. I thank you for that, Lord. Lord, thank you for your marvelous grace and mercy and your love, Father. We love you. And we ask all this in Christ's name. And all of God's children said, Amen.